It's time for Quarantine Cabaret Cocktails with Robert Bannon and Lee Lessig. Hey, Robert. Happy 2021. Happy New Year show. Crazy, huh? Well, hey, Lee. Last time we saw each other was on Christmas Eve. It was. That was so much fun. So that nice. Was so fun. It was a really last minute. Last minute show, but my dear, 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 dear friends, Carol Cook and her husband, Tom Troop, who are Hollywood and Broadway legends at 92 and 96, finally were able to come on the show. Um, so that was really, it really was so something. sweet. It was so nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was sequestered in my brother's basement while he was cooking dinner, and I had a great time seeing all of you. And I, I thought about you all on New Year's Eve. Wishing everyone that watches every week a, a, a very, very happy, happy New Year. Safe and healthy. It's been- I love this New Year's Eve because, you know, I go to bed really early, wake up really early, and um, there was like no pressure to stay up past. No, you didn't have to. I, I loved it. I loved it. Well, Your after, pressure. after this uh, crazy week that we've all had in the start of this year, thank you for joining us for a little bit of an hour of some entertainment and mindlessness because I'm sure there's a lot mm -hmm. of- Thoughts right. <laughs> and needs for cocktails. Crazy, um, after this crazy, crazy, crazy. So, I know. Yeah. Oh. So, um, I want to talk about Robert for a moment. Pretend you're not here. Um, so, Robert and I met because his um, uh, musical arranger and um, um, mm -hmm. musical director that's working on his debut solo album contacted me and asked whether I would be interested in um, releasing the album on my LML Music record label. This was like a year ago. And I we had a conference call, uh, the three of us, and I was like, sure, it sounds great. Ted Firth um, is the musical director and everything he does is brilliant. So I knew, even though I didn't know Robert, I knew that it would be quality. You know, a year, I got a notification on my phone a year ago yesterday was the day I met Ted Firth and he played the first demo of what was to come. So. Right. So we said, yes, that was that. I went on with my life. Um, I was at the very beginning in March of a five week tour, concert tour, which completely collapsed after one performance. And when I got home on March 16th, you know, it was the very beginning of quarantine. And I think everybody was like really anxious for connection, like visual connection. And so like everybody wanted to like FaceTime or Zoom. I am one of probably four people in Los Angeles County that had never used the FaceTime feature on my phone. I, I just never, like why? How are we going to teach you to? camera ready with no notice. <laughs> Nobody I know. Anyway. So Robert texted me because he had some questions about licensing or something like that for the album. And I said, why don't we have a cocktail over FaceTime? And we did. And we just laughed. I think we needed like the release of Absolutely. laughter. And like the next day, like at two in the afternoon, I was like, are we having a cocktail tonight? And he was like, absolutely. And then the next day he's texting me, are we having a cocktail tonight? And before you know it, we had been talking like every day for two weeks. My partner, Mark, was like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I said to him one day, I don't know, I think we're entertaining. Why don't we produce a live stream talk show? I had never met him. No. And we really still met for like a day. <laughs> what? We've only still met each other like one day in our whole we met each other one day, one day. Uh, what month was that? Like November? November. It was November. Secret. It was a secret mission. He was he was out here on a secret mission. That we met for one day. And we were cool. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. But so that was 38 weeks ago. This is our 38th episode of Quarantine Cabaret and Cocktails. I thought we would last about, I don't know. Two months? Month, two weeks? Right. <laughs> it's been crazy. It has been crazy. I've never done a live stream thing. There are weeks we have 12, 13,000 live viewers, which is really ridiculous. But it's been really, really fun. And the reason Robert was out here was because halfway through his recording project, 
COVID, everything went remote. And he was sharing with me some stories about his producer and some issues. And I'm like, this doesn't sound very kosher. So I guess that relationship ended and Robert called me and said, will you produce this album? And I was like, sure. I've never done that remotely before, but we, we kind of made it work. But I was like, you know, if you were here, I need one day in the studio with you. And I, the, I am really good at vocal production. Like I hear truth in vocals. That's just, Mm -hmm. Lee approaches it like an actor, like you really do. There's a there's a, a, the setup of a scene, and it really is helpful. So, so anyway, he escaped, came out here. We went, we literally redid the entire album, all the vocals, in one day, probably in like four hours. Yep. And he was great. Anyway, unbeknownst to me, Robert pieced together a video <laughs> on, on the album, he he recorded uh, from a distance the Julie Gold song from um, uh, that Bette Midler recorded, and he pieced together. People sent him photos, images of this COVID moment in history, and I just want to play a piece of it. I'm not going to play the whole thing. It's on YouTube. It's out there, but it's beautiful. And um, and I mean, he people are commenting like famous people it's so great that you're reaching people i know it's great it's great I, I called lee the day i was going and i said my friend has a camera we're going to the beach and i'm going to make a video i put it on facebook i asked people to send me videos or pictures of them and how they showed love from a distance during quarantine and um i don't know it's like thirty-seven thousand views in a week it's so crazy and uh thank you all for for watching and it's sharing. great it's great listen to this from a distance, the world looks blue and green, and the snow-capped mountains white. From a distance, the ocean meets the stream. From a distance, there is harmony, and it echoes through the land. It's the voice of hope, it's the voice of peace, it's the voice of it. It was uh, definitely a, a labor of love. Thank you to so Kyle. Beautiful. It is so beautiful. Kyle Bob um, put that together for me. And um, thank you, Lee, for being the producer of it and the musicians and, and Gabe who mixed it for me and got it. Like, uh, it really is um, overwhelming. Thank beautiful. you. Beautiful. You've done a great job. Um, I am not uh, usually a fan of recording covers that are so connected to a specific voice like a Medler and whatnot, and you have proven me wrong. Oh, that is a high beautiful. compliment. And um, that's thanks to the arranging of it. And also um, the, I don't know who I thought I was to go against Bette Midler. I just, it, I, everything was from a distance. It sounds corny, but it just fit the moment. So thank you all so much. I am very excited um, because um, uh, our first guests tonight, uh, Kyle Dean Massey and Taylor Fry, who I've I've like know them virtually um, for several years. Um, Kyle, um, I I booked as part of the season uh, for the Cabaret in Indianapolis, a, a venue that I that I work very closely with, and I go there twice a year to do programming, and I happen to be there the week that he was appearing, so I got to see his show which was honestly one of the best crafted, um, you know, uh, concerts that I've seen in a long time. It was just like really well done. I didn't know, I knew, I saw him in Next to Normal, but I didn't know who he was. Um, I, I went because Alice Ripley is a dear friend, as you know, so, but I, anyway, and now I just know them because we take Peloton rides and, <laughs> recommend which to take. But I'm so thrilled they're here because they've had a very busy uh, quarantine. Uh, they don't seem to stop very much. 
I'm going to play just a little sizzle of their lives, and then they'll be here. Everything has its season, everything has its time. Show me a reason and I'll soon show you a rhyme. Once, when I was young, it sounds cliche. I dreamed I'd buy a rocket ship and soar up to the stars. Someday, fly to galaxies far away. I am lost, I am fake, I will never be the same without you, without you. Yeah. Yay! Yeah, that was good work. Oh, hi guys, how are you? Hi. We're wrecked after watching our <laughs> video. <laughs> that is what me and Lee do in quarantine. We just stalk people's YouTube <laughs> clips and steal bootleg. No, videos. your video, your music video. Oh, my, oh gosh, it's nice. It's nice. It's I really PTSD with that last <laughs> song. I was like, oh, we pitch you, bitch. That's <laughs> no, your video, because I was I was thinking today of how much I miss my family. I just haven't seen them in so long. And then that song kind of did me in a little. <laughs> yeah. Where is, where is your family? Mine's in Utah. His is in Arkansas. We just, it's really wow. been a long, a long time. So, yeah. So at the Okay, so you guys moved to California, right? You you left New York, and uh -huh. you moved to West Hollywood, I think, right? Yeah. yeah. And then you, did you get rid of that place and move to Palm Springs? So what happened was when the, we had an office there for our fertility company, and when we went remote, and clearly there was no end in sight, and Newsom had put all the regulations in, we just thought, why are we here? And it, it started feeling kind of dark. I think it's now worse than ever, but um, we had this kind of weekender home down here that was never meant to be a full-time house, but we've always loved the city. We got married here some years ago and we were lucky enough to get the cheapest house in the nicest neighborhood. We had waited so long, <laughs> saved all the money that we made and we blew it all in this house. So we just moved in here and we, we've been wow. here for, yeah, a long time. Wow. And yeah. then, now, Kyle, you were getting ready to open in company on Broadway. Uh -huh, yeah. So you went back to New York for that. Yes. And then, and then I'm seeing you it, renovating a house in the Poconos. How did that happen? Whoa. So, <laughs> so we had a, a house in the Poconos when we lived in the East Coast. That was, that was our weekend or when we lived there. And we got rid of it two, three years ago. And we were here in Palm Springs and um, we had like this moment where we were like, gosh, were we ever happier than we were in the Poconos? Like it was such a wonderful, we, we had just the best memories there. So we- It was also 120 degrees here at the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right so here. And so we went to lunch and um, we found a house online and we bought it and- Cabin. It was a cabin, yeah. And so we bought it. We hadn't, I mean, we didn't, we obviously didn't see it. We didn't know anything about it until we rolled up there in October. But it looks great. It does look great. Well, well now. It, it does now. We're going to get to all that. We will. Talk to us about the Elevate agency. So Elevate is an agency that you started. It's an egg donor agency. And where did that come from? So yeah. We went through a IVF to have a kid. I don't know how much you know about the IVF or the adoption process. Both are pretty complicated, but we wanted to be dads. Um, and this was the quickest, most efficient way forward, actually. And we, after we did it, it, we just, I just remember sitting there thinking, 
oh my gosh, this was such a nightmare. Why was this so challenging and so expensive? And yet still we really it sucked. Yeah, it we totally sucked. We didn't get a lot of, of the options that I wish we had. And at the time I was doing, I don't know what show I was doing, but I had all these incredibly beautiful, smart women around me. And I was talking to them about the process and the difficulties in finding a donor. And a lot of them were like, well, I would like to donate. And I was like, wait a second. <laughs> I think I can do this and I can help couples like myself, you know, gays are, they're a different breed when it comes to IVF, sometimes a little pickier, a different set of criteria when you can choose certain things. That's great. Luckily beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So there's a variety of women out there ready to help these families. And it just, I also had my days free, right? I didn't go to shows all the evening. So I was kind of sitting all day and you learn as an actor, like you either take a class or you go to the gym. And after that, or sometimes you do a self tape, but I found a Peloton. Myself, or, well, <laughs> Peloton. In quarantine. Yeah. But you know, I just found myself with time and I kept thinking, what what can I do to help contribute to the lifestyle that I I really want while doing something I'm passionate about, something hopefully as passionate as, as I am about the industry, the entertainment industry. And so it was just kind of a natural fit. It's been awesome. So that's how it started. So what is happening? Not and, and and you don't have to answer if you don't want to, but what's happening with your family, your family creation. Is that in process? Yeah, it's in the process. <laughs> okay. That, so the process is like, if, if you're going through IVF like us, you choose an egg donor, you create embryos, those embryos are frozen and then you transfer them to a surrogate. So your embryos can be in the freezer forever, <laughs> really. And ours have been in the freezer for several years now. Like, wow. I've Cheers. We got kind of busy helping everybody else have kids. So we were like, I guess we hustle for now and we push our, our journey back. But I will say this, we are getting very, very close. I, th I think, I hope. You never know until... We're until getting you, very close. Yeah. I just know that from personal experience from friends of mine who have been through I the situation in all sorts of relationships and people and, and everything that it can be heartbreaking and really hard. So for you guys to take this on and, and to give help uh, help to people... Um, I think is uh, it's really beautiful, really right. really beautiful. There's your there's your logo there. Our company, wow. there it is. How about that, and not only that, but there for anybody that wants is the the website. And I'll tell you a funny story. I, a, a, yeah, there. A, a, a fan, whatever, was like chatting with me on Instagram. This is like a year and a half ago, and when I first discovered that you had started this agency and was in LA with his husband from Florida because they were interviewing egg donor agencies, I guess, to do this. And I was like, oh, these guys I know just, and I, you were one of the people they were meeting with. I don't remember their name even. But, but, oh, that's crazy. Oh yeah, it's crazy. It's beautiful, beautiful now, for, just so you don't get bored, I, read that you were accepted to Harvard Business School. Yeah. <laughs> because. I'll tell you why, actually. <laughs> I, I, I can be honest here. You know, Elevate became so successful very, very quickly. And I feel very grateful and fortunate for that. But when you enter a new industry, and I, I'm seeing a lot of our friends who are actors and musicians do this pivot, right? Or take yeah. up something new or create a new venture, a podcast, whatever it is. But the industry wasn't particularly welcoming to us when we started. It didn't matter because we were going to go ahead anyway. But I remember just thinking, man, if I just had a little more, a little bit of a credit behind me that isn't, you know, a few Broadway shows, then no one would be able to question me as much. Or I, I just have a little more swag going into it. So I was like, what is the best program I could do? And I, it turned out to be that. So <laughs> I thought that stopped because of COVID, right? Yeah, so I should go on campus in J May. In That's May. Insane. And for how long? How long is that program? So, so for executive, you consolidate it. So you do you do small semesters throughout four years, um, but it ends up being, you know, kind of the same. I'm a, I'll be an alumni and all that fun stuff. So. That's amazing. Harvard alumni, Broadway star, everything. <laughs> And like, we want, what, like it's hard or what is yeah. it? <laughs> right. And Elwood did it. How, Kyle, how far into the preview or tech or whatever 
process with company did you get before COVID? I think we did about a week. Wow. We, we, we had a really short preview process because, you know, they did it in London. So I know. even though it was like pretty, uh, lots of things were quite different. Um, but we were still adding new technical elements every night. Like we didn't even get to add everything. That's going to, oh, our dogs are freaking out. <laughs> it's I know. Here too, somewhere. Oh, under the desk. So yeah, I think we did like maybe 10 previews or so. Wow. I think we were like a week and a half from opening. Wow. That Katrina Lenk is so crazy talented. I love her. What an actress, huh? I like, know. I could watch her iron shirt. She's amazing. She's yeah. Amazing. Embarrassingly, when Kyle popped on the screen, I, I mentioned Nashville because I, Raina James and Juliet Barnes were my people. I, I, that was my my show. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I definitely know you from that. And then uh, Taylor, I saw the view upstairs was beautiful, and I um, and the song that's a song from it that we showed in, in the clip. So you guys, your your talents are besides harvard and, and egg donors and helping people have like you guys are are quite quite the talent so i'm so, so glad we did this tonight because i was feeling really down today that's what we're about <laughs> cheaper than therapy but you have to supply your own wine that's it. however i have been watching i watched you do the renovation of uh palm springs and then i watched you know all on social media you do the renovation in um in Milford, Pennsylvania, where a year ago, I did a concert at the historic theater, the movie house. Oh yeah. Milford, of all places. <laughs> That's, That's crazy. It's such a cute little town. It, it really is a cute town. Yeah. It is a cute town. Although they, they put us up at, I hope they're not watching, but they put us up at this bed and breakfast and the woman was <laughs> so strict. There were, I was only there for one night and I, I was so nervous because she there were so many rules at this bed and breakfast. But anyway, we had a good time. We had a good time. Um, so I'm watching you do these. Now, my partner is an interior designer. And during this um, pandemic, we at the very beginning, like in April, we discovered that we had a leak from the air conditioning unit in the attic that was like slowly dripping into the living room, which we didn't know because we don't use the living room that much until I walked to the front door one day and the entire ceiling had buckled. And oh. everything was ruined. We had a very expensive antique rug that all bled. And we had this oh. fancy wallpaper that all bled. And yeah, so we got a very nice insurance check. Oh, and okay. you can use a third of it to redo the living room because this is like April and we don't know what's happening in the world. Oh, yeah. But then we got like the SBA disaster emergency loan and everything. So we've done a new kitchen. We've built an outdoor kitchen. We've redone the pool patio furniture. I haven't, the only thing that I've done in terms of like, you know, fixer upper is New Year's Eve, our garbage disposal broke and I fixed it. You're a butch guy, Lee. I yeah. I made, I made short ribs on New Year's Eve, and evidently a bone got lodged in the garbage. Our own it. But that's about the end of my talent. Um, but I was so impressed because you posted like a week ago or 10 days ago the bathroom in the Poconos in Milford, and you were like, I have 48 hours to do this bathroom. Yes. And you did everything. You did the plumbing, the electrical, you poured the new floor, you, everything. Everything. Taylor actually painted it. No, when I say you, I mean the both of you. I didn't I wasn't yeah. singling you out. No, trust me when I trust me when I say it is it, he does the majority. He lets you paint. I do what I can. I, I I the truth is I, I don't really like it. I would rather have someone else do it, but he loves it. He says it's meditative. So I'm like, do you need some wine? I well, do like I don't know. I, I texted you and I'm like, I yeah. need I am impressed. How did you learn to do this? And you're like, YouTube videos. Oh my God. So, You've done it since you were young though, yeah? Yeah, I have. My dad yeah. was candy and like I watched a lot of PBS and um, I've been a member of the Handyman Association of America since I was like 12 <laughs> or 11. I got like a little decal I put on my window in my bedroom. Is that like for real? For real, yeah. I paid a membership and I got, I, I still, to this day, I get American Handyman Magazine. I love oh it. God. Well, I'm going to just show some before and after pictures that um, 
that I have. So this is um, before and after the exterior in, in the Poconos. Yeah. Love the, love the color choices. It's like night and day. This is the bathroom I watched you, you do. Crazy. That's eight hour bathroom. We yeah. made the wrong choice with paint. It looks like what, backstage at Wicked, but it's fine. <laughs> it looks good. I like it. I like it. The kitchen yeah. is ridiculous. I mean, oh, gorgeous. That kitchen. That's a cute kitchen. It's, it's a cute. cute kitchen. Now we're going to. I did demo that kitchen. Okay. I was very good. I ripped everything out of there. I did do that. Okay. So now we're going to move to Palm Springs. Now and this we didn't do as we well, we signed it, it, but we definitely hired most of that. Okay, I didn't know that. So that's the exterior, and I'm just going to show the kitchen renovation. There, yeah, I did one of that. Ah, yeah. a good portion of that. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's very impressive. It's very impressive. Now, like I said, I you know barely change a light bulb, um, and uh, I thought this was. I mean, I was impressed. That's you know. It's, it's something. And so I reached out to um, a friend of mine, Doug Wilson, who's the original star of Training Spaces. And he loved your before and after pictures. And he wanted to come on and say hello. So, you know, oh, that's Doug. Hi, guys. How are you? Hey, Doug. Oh, Thank you for being here. Oh, how are you? Love from Training Spaces. It's a star sighting. I'm honestly, if I could get your autograph right now, I would. Just for it but <laughs> I'm, I'm having a little bit of audio it's like cutting in and out so if i i don't react to something i'm sorry <laughs> we're saying you're fabulous that's all yeah oh god well i am so impressed with you um i actually was a handyman in new york city when i uh first started out and uh, i was uh in a, a keen on new york survey of top rated uh services for handymen and i actually maintained michael bloomberg's townhouse is a Handyman and do it all. So, You're yeah. I, but I'm I'm not a part of the association. I didn't even know there was one. Well, I mean, now you know. You can yeah. pay your twelve dollars and become a member now. I, I think I will. I think I will. Well, <laughs> you know, you guys, you know, taking on these projects. I know. I know what kind of work it is, and you've really done a, a tremendous job. Uh, I was noticing the barn, which I really like. Um, I, I like the color and I thought um, I remember when I didn't shut a door or something my mother would say what do you live in a barn <laughs> you guys live in a barn <laughs> yeah we definitely yeah. we definitely do yeah. we love it up there we just yeah. we love it we love the mountains we love the Poconos yeah oh, well, the uh, the farmhouse sink and the in the kitchen it's very sleek uh, very um, very masculine I should say but Thank uh, you. yeah, I got a farm sink too. I love it. You have a farm sink too? I just got one. Yeah, we redid our kitchen and I just got a farm sink. Well, I had I'm really kitchen. resistant to it, but I'm Taylor talked me into it. I'm so happy he did. I consider my they're great. They're great. Yeah. 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 Do you have the drain board in the farm sink inside the sink? No, we don't. We're not that okay. fancy with that house. Well, I was like washing dishes, and you know, it's really easy to uh not mm -hmm. but you get you know um marks on the on the enamel and so oh, yeah. there is a drain and then there's uh like our garbage disposal is on the left side of the sink so they make these drains within the sink and we're based on wherever your disposal is and it's great because nothing scratches i will send you a link perfect i went to target and bought a new bathroom <laughs> <laughs> so I was talking to Doug today and I thought, wouldn't it be fun to like devote an entire show to like pandemic renovations? Yeah. yeah. Right? So yeah. we've been talking about it. We're going to plan one. Would you guys come back? Totally. We love it. Right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, we've had a lot of pandemic renovations here. I know you have. You have. Yeah. Doug will share his his Doug. You're quite the singer and actor and, and performer as well. Well, he started well, out as a as a. That's theater how I theater. started out. Yeah, I still, I still go to the cabarets in New York or the piano bars and and sing. I you know don't tell mamas, brandies, you know you, you name it, um, Birdland. Um, 
cast party. You probably know about that. Yeah, of course. All of, those, of course, yeah. Oh you're, yeah. You're a class act in New York. That's yeah. that's the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am I am so honored that you um, agreed to come on. We love trading spaces, and I thought that would be a fun surprise. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks. It's just so nice to meet you. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. nice to meet you. Maybe one day in New York, we'll all hang out or something. Oh, it's happening. You know, it's, it's funny. I have to say before you go, people have asked me on, on Instagram. We like, oh, like sorry. Where are you this? oh, can you hear me? It was cutting out. I, I can hear you now. I was saying that, like, the, you know, the learning channel, you used to actually learn things on the learning channel. Before oh, yeah. TLC, it was like a thing, you know, yeah. like we learned a lot from you guys. Well, they tried to get away from the learning channel years ago, like 20 years ago, and they wanted to be called TLC, but yeah. it's the learning channel. It's always going to be the learning channel. Whether yeah. you learn something or not, it's still going to be the learning channel. Yeah. <laughs> that I is what it. it is. It's nice when you do learn something, though, I will say. Yeah. Right. Well, Melissa thinks we need a show. I assume she's not talking about Robert and I because we yeah. have a show. Definitely not us. Talking about you guys. Melissa <laughs> needs a show. You guys are such a pleasure. You're all like such Renaissance men making the best of the situation. So it's awesome. Well, I love it. You, you got to do what you got to do, you know? Right? Otherwise, right? Otherwise, you pay out the nose. You That's know? true. That's true. Right. I grew up on a farm, and um, we didn't have supers to change the light bulbs, you know? Um, <laughs> simple as that. <laughs> Here you go. Um, guys, if you're still in Palm Springs next month, I may see you. I will let you know. Okay, oh, yes, cool. please. Sounds good. That'd be great. I'll let you know. Doug, thank you for joining us. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna schedule our home renovation show, which I'm so excited about. Um, and uh, I'll sh I will bring pictures of my renovation that I literally had nothing to do with except I opened the gate. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and That's right. Be safe. Be well. Please be safe. Thank you all so much. And we'll see you soon. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye, bye. Thank you. What a wonderful. I love wonderful. them. They're so sweet and talented. And, and so talented. I love it. Speaking oh, of talented. Oh my God. Okay. So was it what three weeks ago or something? I was surfing the interweb and I saw this piece on James Corden about this kid, Daniel Mertzluff, who had written a song and put it on TikTok. I don't know what TikTok is. We're going to learn. It's an app. And, but people can like, add to your song like so he recorded a song and then people added to it and all of a sudden you have an entire broadway show yes. and james corden invited him on the show which is huge and he didn't know anything that was about to happen and james like i asked some of my friends to add to your thanksgiving song um and it was incredible but it all started because he recorded this grocery song about grocery shopping during a pandemic. Let me just show you a little a little clip. And then these people who I don't think he knows added to it. Uh, In a grocery store. Daniel, please, you can make this work. We are better than this. Because I love you. But I don't know. You don't know. If I like you anymore. No, please, I... So I so understand this because my partner hates grocery shopping. I love it. He was, he was married a hundred years ago. And I guess his oh, wife, wow. all he wanted to do at the grocery store was like read um, gossip magazines and hopefully read something about Nancy Sinatra because he's obsessed with her. <laughs> and, 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 and his wife, Terry, would be like, stay right here and don't move. So he hates grocery stores, hates them. And we've had like our biggest arguments in a grocery store because he literally like only knows how to go to the magazine rack. Anyway, so I totally understand the root behind this song, but these people add to it. I mean, Daniel doesn't know them. He has no authority or 
he doesn't cast them. I mean, they were fantastic, thank God. So then he wrote this Thanksgiving song, which is like everyone's nightmare Thanksgiving. And James Corden cast it with all these famous Broadway people. It's, it's ridiculous. And on the show, they played each track. So first it was Daniel solo. Then it was Daniel and James Corden playing his father. Then it was Daniel and James Corden and Christian Chenoweth playing his mother. They kept adding to it and adding to it until Audrey McDonald was the- <laughs> I, Anyway. Yeah. I, I People were like, um, why would you say Patty is in your icon? And it's like, okay, it was some bad grammar. I was very overwhelmed. Obviously I meant she's like my icon above all icons. Of course, <laughs> of course. Well, what a fun, uh, same Christian. Uh, it has been running through, I think, all of our heads. <laughs> oh my God. So first of all, not only are you a wonderful songwriter and arranger and orchestrator and music supervisor, but you can sing. <laughs> You know, I, I was an actor singer one day of my life back in the day, but uh, but yeah, you can't be back in the day if you're under forty. That's <laughs> the ground rule. <laughs> Daniel, how did the idea start? Like, how have you started making videos? I know TikTok's a phenomenon, and and you're a musical theater guy. How did it all come to be? Yeah, you know, it really started at the be beginning of the pandemic. Um, is when I got into TikTok, just using it initially. Um, Cause it was like the one place that I could go that wasn't exclusively bad news. It was just like dumb content. And you know, like I'm 27. So like Vine was my thing, like in high school, like, so it just reminded me of that Vine energy. Um, so I'm scrolling. What is it's exactly what TikTok is, except they were six second videos instead of minute long. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I actually was introduced to TikTok because our housekeeper loves TikTok and can spend hours laughing. And so she sends me like the video links of things that are funny. And so I watch them, but I have no idea how it works. I don't know how they do the dances. I don't know how they change their clothing so quickly. I don't know how it works. Well, I mean, the realty is like, that's all on the straight side of TikTok. You know, we're on the musical theater side, so I don't really see the dances and stuff. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it, it, it was really fun as I started just like putting out content and uh, the grocery store was the first one that went viral. And that was actually based off of another viral song called New York Summer by Louisa Melcher. And uh, she, it, she went viral. There was like 14 million views or something of her playing the song for her dad in the car. And he's like, who is that? And she goes, it's me. And he goes, wow, that's terrible. And it, <laughs> and it went viral. <laughs> but there's this one line that is the fighting in a grocery store and we don't know if I love you, uh, but I, and I love you, but I don't know if I like you anymore. And that just like screamed modern musical theater to me. So I had to put that out there um, and people just loved it. And you're right. I didn't know any of them, um, had no idea who they were. And thankfully they were good. Um, I actually knew of the, the squeaky wheel and the can of soup because I love their content um, on TikTok, but like, I don't know them personally. Um, yeah. And then, and then the Corden folks reached out and yeah, I had no idea. I was told it was going to be like the late, late show family Thanksgiving. Cause uh, you know, they have brilliant producers and they have the really amazing band there. So it was going to be, I knew James, but then uh, I thought it was going to be lots of other people who were joining in. Um, and so you already knew James Corden. I knew James was going to sing on it. Oh, yeah. But you don't know but, him. Uh, no, 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 no. Not before this. So no, no. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just got, I got a random email um, right after, like a couple weeks after the grocery store thing that was like, hey, I'm a producer at the Late Late Show. We'd love to chat with you. And I was like, okay, I guess. Um, right. And went on a Zoom with him and a writer. And then it was just back and forth collaborating with their team the whole time of like figuring out we want to do Thanksgiving. I wrote like 10 different versions of the first song. Um, and then once we picked that one, I started uh, creating characters along with the writers. Um, and then from there, I actually wrote all of those parts out. So every single one of those is written like in specific counterpoints. You can hear each one, but like my part alone is interesting enough. So like figuring out that was really hard. Um, but I had no idea who was going to be performing it. That is wow. So you knew that they were that it was going to be performed by a whole cast, but you had no idea who the cast was. No, I, I thought it was going to be James, the band, and a couple of the producers. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. Audrey McDonald as a <laughs> smoke detector. <laughs> I love it. Well, here's the crazy thing. So, you know, I 
saw that. And so I was like, oh, is he on Facebook? Is he on Instagram? Well, there you are. And I sent you a message and I was like, would you like to come on our little show? And and you like, yeah, that sounds fun, blah, blah, blah. I had no idea that the following week, Ratatouille, the TikTok musical, was going to take over the world. The world. I had no idea. <laughs> and so I, I said to Robert, I'm like, well, our timing is really good. We already secured him. On the <laughs> cut of, of entertainment right here. I had no idea. So I have to say, I, um, I have the attention span of a two-year-old, literally. I cannot finish watching most anything. And I bought a ticket in the movie. I bought I, I actually sorry, I, sorry. I took that movie because I took my nephew. Okay. The first thing I, I did see that movie. I was grinning from ear to ear so much like my face hurt. There is so much virtual programming out there that what struck me is how fresh and innovative and I mean the talent behind this and the fact that it started on TikTok, it's crazy. It's crazy. So I'm we're thrilled that you're here. You are a brilliant talent. And we then reached out to some of your castmates and asked them to join us. Um, but I just want to show a little I'm gonna show the final number. So people, if you haven't seen Ratatouille, also they raised a million and a half dollars for the actors. We're, right? actu we're actually at 1.9 uh, right now. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Now, can I ask, is it, I hope it's not too personal, but can I, was, was everybody involved paid as well? Oh yeah, yeah. Everyone was, everyone was compensated from the original TikTok creators, the cast, the orchestra, the marketing, um, the arrangement. Awesome. Everyone was compensated. Yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. The, the I, folks at I cannot talk highly enough about the folks at CV who produced it. Yeah, unbelievable. So I just want to show this number, and then we're going to have Emily Jacobson, who I believe that her TikTok song was the first one, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And and <laughs> and JJ, who I had to ask him like how they did the the triple. Yeah. Dance thing. Oh, he, a, he was in Book of Mormon on Broadway, but the two dancers in the show, they were in triplicate. And I'm like, how did they do that? And he's like, I did that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, uh, that's this a, is not much I don't know about TikTok and all its like little editing things, but hold on, here we go. One can Wow. So good. That's amazing. That is just amazing. I love the show. I mean, I love the show. I told everybody um, that weekend that they had to get a ticket and watch it. I'm so glad that it was so successful as a fundraiser. I'm so glad that all of you are being employed. I love it. So, em Emily, I know, right? So you had this song in your head and you TikToked it and now it's become a full fledged musical that's raised nearly two million dollars. Has that sunken in? Unbelievable. I still I wake up every morning and I have to like check all the social media apps. Like did this actually happen? Like it was so quick and so unexpected. And really, I made this song as a joke to send to like friends and family. I didn't have any followers on TikTok. I had no goals or aspirations with this. 
and I had no idea it was gonna create a musical, but I'm so glad it did, thanks to Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was really funny because I, I was actually tagged on Emily's video by a guy named Rocky Patera, who went really viral for I'm an Accountant, which if you haven't seen I'm an Accountant, his song, oh my God, Lee, it's amazing, it's so funny. It's um, called I'm an Accountant? I'm an Accountant, it's amazing. Okay, I'm gonna um, watch. And, and when I did that, when I did the arrangement, like it was clearly parody, like quoting Hunchback at the end and all of that stuff. And now watching this where, like, cause I did the arrangement. So I wrote like the new bit that we have and the whole beginning part there that no one can compare to you, anyone can cook. Like I just, it felt so Disney to me. And like watching that and thinking back to that original video is just like so bizarre. Unbelievable. Instinct. I will tell you, this is this is the only time I like dipped my toe into like social media, like a TikTok, because Instagram has their reels, which is like TikTok, right? And during this pandemic, for some crazy reason, probably too much rose, I adopted and rescued a third golden retriever. And this I know, I have a 13 and a half year old, a two and a half year old, and now a one year old. And the two babies are obsessed with each other. And, <laughs> oh, this is so great. Cause as we're talking, as we're talking, Dulcy, my housekeeper that I love says, can you get a rosé wine for Mark and Jonathan and I? <laughs> I'm like, I am on a show. <laughs> anyway, the baby Golden has taken to taking the collar of the two-year-old and dragging her across the room. You'll be a viral superstar now. And so I recorded it and I, I've never posted anything on TikTok, anything on Reels. And I thought, well, I'm gonna put it on Reels. In 20 minutes, I had over 3,500 views. Yep. So I yep, was- that feels like, about right. I am an influencer. <laughs> but meanwhile mm -hmm. it's been like three weeks i have not gotten any free shit nothing <laughs> you want a paid sponsorship I've, I've given up my influencership well you all it's not i mean ratatouille obviously is a phenomenon and it's, it's amazing and, and disney and, and sea view and, and everyone that is over there that and that let um you guys do this and give permission is amazing you all put out amazing content jj's dancing i mean jj is like a quadrillion people follow him on tiktok i got text messages from people in musical theater school, like I love JJ, like JJ is like my, my dancing idol. Like I want to dance like him. Oh it's such God. a place for you guys to put stuff. How did you get started on it, JJ? Um, I actually, well, so I used to make videos when I was younger um, on YouTube, back when I was like 12, 13, 14 years old, I was just like bored and my sisters would get me all these wigs. And so I stopped making them because of like, cyberbullying, to be honest, but also because I was like, I'm going to college, this is cringy, I don't wanna like be putting stuff, I don't know, there was something weird about it that I was scared. Um, and so obviously during the pandemic, like everyone was going home to their parents or whatever, and I came home to North Carolina and I was cleaning out my closet and I found all these wigs and stuff from, um, from my childhood and I was like, you know what, why not? And I downloaded TikTok and realized like Dan was saying earlier that like, you know, it's not all like straight TikTok dances. It's like, there's a lot of, so, so much of a theater community on there. And um, realizing that and seeing how much comedy is out there and theater related humor, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just start making stuff for fun. And and then it slowly kind of built over the course of this past year uh, since April. So it's been really fun wow. to find a community online during this. Wow. How did you well, I just wanna say when I was 12 and 13 year olds, there was no cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a blessing in itself. <laughs> I, think I think I was 29 when there was a cell phone, maybe 28. It's wow. Did you, can you explain please how Daniel and, and how did you guys learn the music and the dancing virtually? How did it, how did it all go down for Oh Rachel? God, that is a great question. <laughs> so, you know, before, like you, you really got to break down the timeline, right? So I, I had my first meeting with Seaview January 4th, which means we have less than a month and uh, team oh music. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, December 4th. Did I say January? Okay. December 4th. <laughs> uh, so less than a month, right? And uh, and we didn't start writing until December 6th. 
Um, but we had, uh, we, by then we had uh, the orchestrator and the music director and the copyists all set. So that's when I did my first arrangement. The drums started recording a week from then and 13 days from then is when the orchestra was recording. So I was doing a chart a day, giving it to the orchestrator who then gave it to the copyist, who was then, uh, as soon as I would finish an arrangement and give it to the orchestrator, I would then make a vocal track to give to the video editor and uh, our director, Lucy Moss, so that they could start conceiving what that moment would look like. And then, uh, oh my God, brilliant. I, we we had like, her. I had a moment. We I, love yeah, her. I had a moment that first meeting with her and I was like, I'm just gonna say, um, I love Six. I saw it uh, in London, Chicago, and three times on Broadway in like the week and a half that it was open and I love it. Um, and we'll move on from there. <laughs> um, I'm, right yeah, so like, I'm right with you. I, at that same time, it was like they were casting, figuring out all of that. Um, and then just within like four days, we taught it all to the, all of the cast. Uh, like JJ had to then, they all had to record it. And then it all went to um, to the people to like put it together. But this is also why we were still mixing the vocal tracks. So like most of the um, cast didn't record, well, none of the cast recorded with the orchestra. They recorded with a piano track and me singing with them. <laughs> Um, so it was, yeah, it was a while, but JJ, I don't know how you feel about being yeah. on the other side. Yeah, it was crazy. Cause it was like, he said, like, it was also the week of Christmas. So we all had our zoom rehearsals. I had, uh, one with the music team. So Dan was in there and it was like two hours. And then I had one that same day with the choreo team. That was like two and a half hours. Um, and, uh, that was tricky learning stuff like virtually and and so we were just like plunking some of these notes on our own and they were good they were like okay cut off on three here cut off on four here this is your solo here sing tenor one can you actually record tenor one and baritone here like they were very organized but it was crazy because then it was kind of up to us like over the course of two days essentially to send everything in and make it also sound good and look good and um, and same thing with the choreo. They taught us everything in the matter of hours. Um, myself and Joy, who's the other dancer. Right. And um, we just, you know, I went to a studio that my friend um, let me into and I just like recorded everything the day before and we submitted it all by Christmas Eve. Oh Crazy. Yeah. And Emily, so you recorded a, a, your song and then other people added to it. And then, I mean, how many people in total, you know, and I guess they all hashtag so you could find them all. Is that how it works? Well, for the original song, people sometimes would do it. A lot of times they would just use the uh, song in the background of their own videos. So I think about almost 19,000 videos have been made using the sound alone, but that's not including Daniel's version of the song, which has another couple thousand people that have duetted and added on. It, it's been wild. I just can't believe the exposure it's had in such a short amount of time. Wow. Well, what really moved me and I thought was really nice, and I'm not, again, to, to Greg and Seaview and everyone over there, they let you introduce it. Like they they kept, they let you as this idea, like they gave the credit to where it's due. And I think that's so wonderful of the producers and the creators of it to, to really know where it really, where it came from. Right. I appreciated that. It was so nice. I had a, a meeting with Lucy Moss, which I was like, oh my God, they had a script for me. I did like multiple takes. I, I couldn't believe it. It's hard to like watch yourself. I almost had to like mute it because I don't want to hear my own voice. I don't want to see it. But I was very grateful to be given the opportunity. It's, it's well, fantastic. When I was watching the broadcast, I didn't know who you were. And I was like, I, I, what's the connection? And then I realized that you were the springboard, the impetus for this entire thing that has just taken the internet by storm. It's crazy. It's crazy. But what I love is that artists are thriving even in our current situation it's so it's amazing it's just amazing i love it i i, I it just makes me very hopeful really really hopeful well, i know this is definitely not going to be, be the end of the ratatouille musical i i'm sure I we'll, we'll, sure. we'll hear more um, um, would you mind would you mind just giving Tom Schumacher a call maybe then? That would be great. That would that be great. Is, get on it. He's like, come on. Oh <laughs> and what have you guys been doing? Um, Emily is a school teacher, so leave, as a teacher, like teachers get the job done here. We get the, 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 the 
JJ, if you want to find JJ and go on his website, he'll teach you how to dance. You can book him for private classes. Yes. He'll I and online coaching has been amazing during this time. Like the the it's crazy that we're all able to connect. It's not the same as in person, but there is so much good in that. And like you said, artists will always find a way. And I feel like this show is a testament to that. It's also a testament that really good art can come from anywhere, even TikTok. Like that's the coolest part about it. Wow. And Thanks. and Daniel, we are far from done with the amount of music oh and, my God. And, yeah. gonna, and shows you're gonna mm -hmm. share with this world. It's just only begun. Well, yeah. Daniel, are Let's you like pursuing a, a performance career or are you now, no, you're like <laughs> orchestrating, musical supervising, songwriting? Yeah, really, it's composer arranger is how I bill myself. Um, and then I, you know, I do love, like, I love music directing. I live in the 54 below world um, doing all of that. And, you know, it's funny because it that, besides all of the other things that I've gotten from this, it really makes it it's really felt like a 54 show of like, we have this weird idea, it's super niche, we're gonna go with it, and then people just become obsessed with it anyways. And like, that's really what it felt like was putting together one of those 54 shows, which I just like miss more than anything in the world. Um, but yes, oh no, I love perf I love singing my own songs at the piano, um, but no, God bless all performers. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> you, have a, you have a great voice, you have a great voice. You do. You know, I live on the other coast, so I love, I used to live in New York for many years and I love visiting and I love leaving. And uh, but, uh, well, you know, we have space out here. I don't know, I like it. I like it. Although now like we're like the, the hotbed of COVID. I so. will be at all of your 54 shows and all of your Broadway shows and I'm an East Coast guy. He is. I, I'm, in, I'm in Jersey. Jersey. I will be there. Here. Listen, the day that we can do Ratatouille the musical at 54, like it just yes. needs to be there. I can picture it already. It, it needs to be there immediately. It will be well, there. I, I run a um, uh, 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 concert booking and production company. And I, I mean, I rep Cheetah Rivera and Lea Salonga and every Broadway superstars. But I think we should talk about Ratatouille, the TikTok yeah. on tour. Get in the bus. Get on the road. Yes. Right? Oh, uh -uh. We, we are not doing a bus and no truck. Bus and truck. Yeah. We are doing no first national tour, please. We have that Disney money. Uh-uh. There's no bus That's and truck. Right. <laughs> Lee has a call with Disney tomorrow, actually, and we'll, we'll put in a... We do. True. <laughs> I do. That is great. Um, I can't wait to see, and don't worry, I'm going to milk us talking to you guys for all my TikTok, you know, hi, I'm going to post videos and tag yes. you. I'm going to build that. I'm milking the whole interview. I, I'm getting I, followers if it kills me. <laughs> I have to say, honestly, 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 <laughs> you know, we've all been subjected to a lot of virtual um, programming <laughs> and I... I, I cannot stress this enough. This uh, show was refreshing. It was innovative. It was so musically satisfying. It it was like, you know, it was like a Broadway show. Yeah. I mean, you had an amazing cast. Amazing. Oh it was God. great. It was just great. You should be very proud. And um, I don't know, it gave me hope. It made me smile like big time. So I am so thankful that you all agreed to spend some time with us. Congratulations. Thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah. thank you so thank much for having, having us. us. <laughs> and now it's over. Can people, will it come, can people see it ever again or what? We are very honored that Disney let us do a 72 hour <laughs> actress benefit, <laughs> benefit for the Actors Fund. And we look forward to engaging with their other properties. He's hired. Yes. That was that really some good PR when, right there. When, when they leave, we'll try to see it. Listen, my <laughs> process is not like I said anything else. <laughs> Thank you so much. Listen, you, stay guys. safe. Keep in touch. Awesome. Our show is our show. Be well. Come back yeah. anytime. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. So Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, you're wonderful. That's so, I'm that. so old. I love them. They're so talented. They're so talented. You know, so refreshing. Yeah. Just youth. My, dream, youth. my dream is to be a French rat in a musical. 
Is it? It is. I don't ask for much, Lee. <laughs> Next week is a disco show. So get out your Oh your my God. So this is the most amazing thing. We've been doing this show for 38 weeks and over the last several months, there have been several artists, managers that have contacted us asking if we would be in the artists. disco world. You what? We're big in the disco world. Evidently, evidently. And so we were contacted by Martha Wash's manager, Martha Wash from the Weather Girls, It's Raining Men, hallelujah. She's the voice behind, it's just a good vibration. All of those um, CNC music facts, she did all. Love it. So, and then we spoke to Thelma Houston's manager. Do you want to sing her song too? Don't leave me this way. <laughs> and we thought, wow, that's a show, but we need someone from the village people. And so we got them. <laughs> so Jim Newman is joining us. I'm excited. I've got my outfit on order. I hope it arrives in time. It's going to be a disco inferno. Right. We're thrilled, right? It's going to be so much fun. I just love how this show has become the weirdest mishmash of we're musical theater, we're disco, we're folk music, we're TV. We're just whatever, anyone who says yes. I love it. Now, <laughs> I will tell you that in our comment thread, and I didn't put them up because I didn't know if you wanted me to, but you had about 87 of your students that said, hi, Mr. Bannon. That's all they say is, hi, Mr. Bannon. So I didn't know whether I should expose I have to talk to them tomorrow. No, it's fine. It's totally fine. But I'm my, video, my from a distance video is there's 37,000 views. I'm sure 36,000 of them are from. Go team. You keep watch. You want good grades? You watch that video. Every 480 of them are from my mom. I love her. Hi, I, love, I love her too. How are you? <laughs> anyway, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Happy well, New Year. Happy New Year. That, I know that like yesterday was a crazy day, like crazy day. Um, but I am really hopeful. I am really, really hopeful um, that um, 2021 is going to be better and more peaceful and more calm. And we will get through this. We will. And, you know. This is yet to come. Yeah. Um, oh, and someone just said, will, will, it tip, will it tip the Christmas tree onesie? I don't know what that means. No, will, will our disco outfit top the Christmas tree? Oh, top. Oh, no. no. No, it will never top that. However, if you want to tip the Christmas tree onesie, see, that was like a segue. That's what they call a segue in the big Barbara Walters. I <laughs> happy new year Vieira. i know Vieira. happy new year anyway if you want to support our show uh, it does cost money to live stream this this is not a for-profit um venture and uh you give us nothing right exactly so every dollar helps us pay for the uh live stream so feel free to uh virtual tip us and um yeah We'll see you next week. Good to be back. It's good to be back, right? No so good to be back. I missed you. I missed the show. I missed all I of miss you out here. So. I kind of left you alone over like Christmas. I know. I know. I got know. nervous. I thought I did something. No, I just figured you're with your family or you know. watching Netflix. I know. No, I know. And now we're back. We have things to do, Lee. We have Are you watching my brilliant friend on HBO Max? Um, I just put it on my list. I'm finishing the I Hate Susie or We Hate Susie or whatever. Uh, uh, yeah, Billy Perfect. Porter produced it. It's funny. Perfect. I'll watch that yeah. now. It's good. It's really good. It's really good. We'll see you next week. It's going to be a disco inferno. <laughs> Am I right? I'm ready. Be safe, everybody. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.